Hello and welcome to Buying Abroad. My name is John Howell and I'm a lawyer, a partner in the law firm the International Law Partnership based in London and Leeds. I've been dealing with international property transactions now for nearly 25 years and I've been asked through this series of seminars to share some of that experience with you. This seminar is about what appears to be the very simple question of how do you transfer your money overseas, but as we'll see, it's not quite as simple as it first appears. In the course of transferring your money overseas, you will come in contact with somebody called a foreign exchange dealer or an FX dealer. And he is your best friend, after of course your lawyer, um, because he will save you a lot of money. The message here, and I'm sorry if any of you are bank managers, don't use your ordinary bank to transfer funds abroad. You won't get anything like as good a deal from your ordinary high street bank as you will from a specialist dealer. Specialist dealers will give you a much better rate of exchange and they'll also offer you other very useful services such as forward buying currency and um, making regular payments in foreign currencies. So why is it that the rate that you'll get from an FX dealer is better than from your bank? Well, basically, it's because the FX dealers are more efficient than your bank is. They tend to be much smaller businesses, fewer staff, fewer overheads. It's also their only business. They're specialists in the field. And the combination of all those things means that they can be more competitive. The rates differ because everybody wants to take a different amount of profit out of the transaction. There is a basic rate called the spot rate, which is the rate that banks will use when dealing with transfers as between themselves. And if you deal with your own high street bank or with an FX dealer, they will give you a rate that's a little bit worse than the spot rate at that moment. They will give you rates, though, that are dramatically different from each other. The rate is constantly changing. Literally every second it goes up and down. And that makes it very difficult to compare exactly what's on offer from company A and company B. Because by the time you phone the second or the third company, you'll find that the first company's rates have long since changed. And sometimes quite dramatically over a short period of time. So how much is the difference in the rates? Well, I got my office to phone one high street bank and two currency dealers to find out the rates that they would offer on changing pounds to euros. The high street bank gave a rate of 1.43 euros to the pound. The first of the currency dealers gave a rate of 1.444 euros to the pound, and the second gave a rate of 1.454 euros to the pound. Now you may think, what does that matter? It's only a tiny little difference. But in fact, on a £100,000 transfer, that would be a difference of £1,600 that you would have saved by using the cheapest dealer instead of the high street bank. That's a lot of money. And it's not just that that you save, because generally the cost of transferring money through a currency dealer is less than the cost of transferring through a high street bank. I had to send £100,000 to Turkey not long ago, and my bank, we had to do it through our UK bank for various reasons, uh, my bank charged £35 for making the transfer. That's not too bad. But the bank in, in Turkey charged £500 simply for receiving the money into the account. Compared with that, our currency dealer would have charged us £10 at the UK end and nothing at the Turkish end. So that's a saving of another £525 by using a currency dealer and not the bank. Now, before you all ask, I'm not being paid commission to sell the services of currency dealers, not being paid by them at all. Uh, but it is just a fact that if you're trying to find the most cost-efficient way of transferring funds abroad, that is using the currency dealer.
OK, so you can get better rates by using your currency dealer rather than your high street bank. But there are other services they can offer as well. And one of those is forward buying. And that's the process of buying currency for day, today for use in the future. For example, if you're buying a house and you know you're going to have to pay for it in April 2009, you can do a deal today to buy that currency, agree the exchange rate today, pay 10% now and the balance on delivery. And you'll get an exchange rate that is very similar to the rate that you would be offered if you were doing the transfer today. Now, of course, if the pound then weakens against the Turkish lira, for example, you'll be delighted that you forward purchased. On the other hand, if the pound rises in value, you will kick yourself. But most of our clients don't do this to gamble on exchange rates, which is frankly a mugs game. It, it, they do it because they want the certainty of knowing that their house is going to cost them £68,500 and not £69,000 or £71,000 just because of the changes in the exchange rate between then and now. Another service that the dealers will offer you is regular payments. You may have regular payments to make overseas. For example, you may be paying a mortgage in, say, um, Morocco out of your pound sterling salary. And every month you're going to need to transfer a relatively small amount of money to pay the mortgage. Transferring small amounts of money internationally is a disaster because the bank charges are totally disproportionate to the amount that you're transferring. And so some of the currency dealers have found a way around that by banding all of those small sums together and making one major transfer. They then absorb the bank charges and so they can charge you a very small amount to transfer the money overseas. Another uh, advantage for you. Which FX dealer do you use? Well, uh, as is so often the case, the answer is only use a reputable dealer. You have to understand these are just ordinary limited companies, and if they go bust whilst they've got your money, then you can lose the lot, and that doesn't look very clever. You'll see some leading dealers who advertise widely uh, and are very well known in the industry. And there are lots of tiny little dealers. Uh, you need to be a little bit more cautious if you're dealing with them. Or you might use your lawyer. In our case, for our clients only, of course, we're not currency dealers, uh, we will transfer the funds for you. Because we're transferring literally millions of pounds a week, we tend to get a better rate than our clients do. And we also have a deal with our currency brokers that we don't part with a single halfpenny of your money until after they have proved to us that they have already sent the funds overseas. And that means, of course, that your money is totally protected. Two examples of how the importance of currency works in practice. The first involved a client of mine who was buying a property in Spain and the seller insisted on payment in Swiss francs, cash Swiss francs. You might, may have your own thoughts as to why he might have wanted that, but I'm sure it wasn't entirely above board. My client had little choice but to comply and he had to go about the process of sorting out the cash Swiss francs. Now, the way you don't do it is find a quarter of a million Swiss francs in cash and put them in your suitcase and carry them through the airport. That way you get arrested, as he quickly found out. It is illegal to take large amounts of money across borders in most countries. And if you get caught doing it, and with modern detection you probably will be caught, then you will end up in the slammer and the money will be confiscated. We may be able to get it back for you, less a penalty uh, and less uh, a retention, but it's something you don't want to do. Another example was a client of mine who bought a castle in France, an expensive property, well over a million and a half sterling. And when he agreed the rate for the castle, the franc was relatively strong, and this is in the days of francs before the euro, this franc was relatively strong at something in the order of nine point something francs to the pound. By the time he bought the castle some months later and had to pay for it, the rate had weakened and he was only able to get 
eight point something, 8.9 I think it was, to the pound. And what that means is that it cost him nearly £100,000 extra in sterling terms to buy that currency. Very, very expensive mistake from his point of view. And that's it, really. Transferring funds abroad via a specialist dealer will get you a lot more in the way of value for money. And uh, that saving can much more usefully be used on other things like going out for dinner when you buy the property. If you'd like more information, if you want to contact me or get more information about the seminar programs that we've been running, contact the Real Estate TV website, www.realestatetv.tv. On that website, you'll find a free copy of this presentation for you to download and other seminars giving much more information about lots of subjects relating to buying property abroad. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the seminar and goodbye.